Hi, so I've got three minutes and I've got so much to talk about, but I'll, I'll go quick. Uh, I'm going to talk about adjuvants, I'm going to talk about what we're doing with adjuvants, and then I'm going to say why it's important and why it's very important, because you know, we're at Ginkgo here and everything has to be very, very important. So for start, um, so adjuvants, what are adjuvants? So adjuvants are added to vaccines to make them more effective. Um, it, it increases the immune response. Um, there's not that many adjuvants around, it's about four or so. Um, there's alum, there's one that comes from squalene, um, uh, shark cartilage, and then there's QS21, uh, it's a saponin, which we're focused on. Now, QS21, the source of it is Chilean tree bark. The only source of it is these trees in Chile. And this causes a lot of supply chain issues. And in fact, when I was working at Operation Warp Speed, uh, I was at Health and Human Services, and the secretary, a Secretary Azar, and the DOD, talked about securing the supply of these trees in Chile and sent people down to guard the, the forest in Chile. So it was a bit of a problem. Well, we at Saponics can now um, make QS21 in plant culture. So no trees needed. It reduces the supply issue. Um, it's consistent supply, consistent quality. So we've kind of solved that problem and we're doing deals with Pharma now to give them QS21 to put in their vaccine candidates. So that's what we're done right now. Now with Ginkgo, what we're doing is we're looking at cell engineering to make the adjuvant QS21 in cells and working with Micah and Sky and Jen Wiff, it's a great team, to be able to scale up and get even more yield um, out of QS21 and then reduce the cost tremendously as well. We're also working with them on novel adjuvants, and that means really creating a toolkit right now so we can develop new adjuvants that can be tailored towards different novel diseases or existing ones. So why is this important? Well, it's important because vaccines are so critical to, to health. Um, if you think about somebody who's healthy, they have a lot of wishes, but if you're sick, you only have one wish, to be healthy. And so what we're able to do is provide our adjuvant to different vaccines to make them more effective. Um, vaccination is considered to be the most cost-effective a medical invention ever introduced. Um, in fact, the CDC said that for children, I'm going to read this, um, between 1990, 1994 and in 2013, 20 years, vaccines prevented three quarters of a million deaths, saving $300 billion in direct medical costs and a trillion in societal costs. So we just see the value. So vaccines impact not just how long we live, but how we live, our productivity, our happiness. So that's important, but now why is it really important? So when we think about um, the disease that we've seen, we lived through COVID, it put the world at a standstill, right? And we developed the vaccine to COVID in remarkable time. It was one of the greatest achievements uh, of the US government and for science. But you know what? The vaccine for COVID is not perfect. It's expensive, it's a complicated um, cold chain, and the duration of protection is not that long, and you know, the costs are very high, especially for the developing world. So by using QS21, we could make these vaccines for COVID cheaper and more accessible. You know, if you think about other endemic diseases, so I was born in South Africa and when I moved to Canada, you know, I was diagnosed with malaria and tuberculosis. There wasn't good vaccines for tuberculosis and malaria back then, and there's not good vaccines now for those diseases. There are vaccines, but they're not that great. So while vaccines are phenomenal, there's still a whole lot more we can do with those vaccines. Now, if we think about the future, so what we're seeing more and more is outbreaks. We've seen Zika, we've seen monkeypox, uh, SARS, this is going to keep happening, it's going to be happening with more and greater frequency just because of the nature-human interface, um, et cetera, and climate change. And so what we're doing now is we're actually pairing up what Concentric is doing in the biosurveillance aspect. You know, we've got this radar, but if you don't have a way to respond to it, it doesn't really matter. So what we're doing is working through generative molecular design, and it's very much like the chat GPT, the G is generative. So through novel data sets, novel questions, just like ChatGPT, we come up with novel adjuvants paired up with these emerging pathogens very quickly. So pairing up the threats, but then building countermeasures to them very, very quickly. So I'm working with our colleagues at Concentric Mora uh, and the team, Dan Helmer, et cetera, to really think about how we can accelerate not just the identification of these diseases, but the response to those diseases as well. And then also we're addressing inequity. So I, I mentioned malaria, there's no vaccine for HIV. So globally, the worst inequity in health um, is health. So five million children die every year of infectious diseases. Um, that's down from 10 million 20 years ago, but that's still five million children every year that die of infectious diseases. So 
I don't think there's anything better we can do than using AI and general molecular design to develop new adjuvants to make better vaccines to make the world a healthier and happier place. Thank you.